So, I got a new toy. Yep, I bought a Roland E4 vocal tweaker. One of their new range of, honestly, I'm not a Volker type bits of kit. It was a bit of an impulse purchase. I've wanted to include vocals in my work for some time, but I have absolutely no confidence in my singing voice, like probably a lot of people out there. So this seemed like a natural way around that problem. If I used a door, I would almost certainly have an auto-tune plug-in, but I don't use a door, so that's not an option for me. And this seemed like the next best thing. My first impressions are that I quite like the simplicity of it. All of the controls are on the front panel and you can access all of the parameters that you need with just maybe one button press. I could pretty much get it out of the box and start messing around and playing with it instantly. No great huge learning curve for the basics. And one of the things I discovered was that it made a tone that I have been looking for for a long, long while. This is what I like, doing the monkey stuff. Oh. There's a TV program that I think called Vikings and they've got kind of a vocal drone at the beginning. I discovered that with the Roland E4 tweaker, I could actually get a tone that approximated that. Once you've messed around with the vocal shaping controls, the next thing that I noted was the looper, which although I'd read the stats and knew it was there, I hadn't really thought about it as being a reason to purchase. I quite enjoyed it, I quite liked it. It's very, very simple. It's one button to record, and then you press the button to stop recording, and it just loops back automatically. I see them waiting. From there, you can overdub and you can create layers and presumably you can create as many layers as you need until you run out of sampling time. In this way, you can build some rich and mysterious vocal soundscapes. The architecture of the machine means that the pitch and the formant shaping are fixed once you have recorded a loop. So you can't record a vocal thing and then go back and auto-tune it afterwards or change the formants afterwards. But that's not a deal breaker. You can still add and remove the reverb and you can mess around with a big old scatter dial that there is in the middle. Although this affects all of the layers that you've got looping at the same time. But it's quite an interesting effect and I can see how it can be used in some creative ways.
Bear in mind that I've only been messing around with it for a little while and I know that there are features that I haven't made use of yet. There are MIDI in and out ports so you can get a much deeper control of the auto tune and the harmonies. I have heard rumours that you can actually play the notes that you want to auto tune to or use a keyboard to create the vocal harmony that you want to keep. The thing that I found most irritating was that when I went to the Roland website, I couldn't just download a PDF of the manual. It directed me to another web page. I don't understand why they've done this. Having a PDF document is so much nicer and so much easier for me. I don't want to have to sit in a browser the whole time. Surprisingly, my favourite feature from this was actually the looper. It was something I never played with before, and it is bundles of fun. Um, I can see myself creating strange sounds with that quite a lot. I like the harmonies, and I like the auto-tune and the format shaping, and I can see that they can be very, very useful. but it was the looper that gave me that kind of fun bit that I was not expecting. I was expecting a kind of bread and butter tool, but there was something a little bit more creative there that I could play with. I can see myself using this in two ways. The first way would be to create some vocal samples. So either singing a line that I can then use in a sampler at a later date, or creating some interesting vocal kind of effects with strange auto-tunes and, and harmonies added to them. But I can't see it being that useful for live vocal work, except in creating big soundscapes. What I did discover was that you could use the live looper and put anything through there. So I wired it up to my Flow 8 and sent a signal out from one of the monitor outputs and into the Roland E4. And messed around with that as I was sampling things up and setting them up as a loop. I can see that being used as kind of a way to transition between tracks or create some kind of strange live ambience. I know it wasn't designed for this, but what the hell, 
you've got a toy, you've got to play with it, and you've got to see if you can push things in a direction that, that you've not used before. So the big question is, was it worth it? In strict monetary terms, probably not. I'm never going to get my money back from it. I doubt many people who watch this will actually return an investment on the equipment that they buy. So it's a bit moot and it's a bit academic in that sense. It definitely adds something new to my Sonic Arsenal. I've got plenty of synths of different types. I've got lots of analog mono synths. I've got PCM rompler based synths. I've got samplers which will mangle sounds in different ways. I've also got, you know, quite a lot of acoustic instruments, but I didn't have anything that I could use to create nice vocal samples with. If it ends up sitting in the back of my cupboard and doesn't really see the light of day after a couple of months of novelty use, then no, it won't have been worth it. It will have been a waste of time. However, if it allows me to continue doing things that I haven't quite got round to yet, that I've always thought about doing, then yes, definitely worth it. Even if it's not spectacular, even if it is just more like a, a kind of utility bit of kit, sometimes utility bits of kit are just worth getting. Keep tuned to see what I end up doing with it. Um, like, subscribe, press the bell, yada, yada, yada. And as they say at the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation, share and enjoy. Bye, kids.